moment in African history. That's my girl Serena, always ready. Here we go. So today we tell the tale of the Cullinan, Cullinan Diamond. Have you guys heard of the Cullinan Diamond? No. What? How could What's you that? not have heard of the Cullinan? I don't know. Of course you not. <laughs> right, so we're going to talk about it, okay? You ready? So on January 25, 1905, 1905, at the Premier Mine in Pretoria, South Africa, uh, listen to this, 3,106 carat diamond. Did you get that? 3,106 carat diamond is discovered during a routine inspection by the mine superintendent. Weighing 1.33 pounds and christened the Cullinan, it was the largest diamond ever found. Frederick well Wells was 18 feet below the Earth's surface when he spotted a flash of starlight embedded in the wall just above him. He discov his discovery was presented that same afternoon to Sir Thomas Cullinan, who owned the mine. Cullinan then sold the diamond to the Transvaal Provincial Government, which presented the stone to Britain's King Edward VIII as a birthday gift. Worried that the diamond might be stolen in transit from Africa to London, Edward arranged to send a phony diamond, a fake one, aboard an armored steamer loaded with detectives and security as a diversionary tactic. And the real Cullen diamond was simply posted by registered mail to England. <laughs> How cool is that? Arriving safely enough, no private buyer showed any interest. And so, pushed by the Prime Minister of Transvaal, General Louis Botha, the government the Transvaal government bought the stone from the Premier Mine Company and the price paid at that time was £150,000. Today, that would be about £18 million pounds, okay, in parity. In 1907, it was decided by the Transvaal government to present the Diamond King Edward as a present for his 66th birthday. The glamorous gift was meant to help restore relations between Britain and South Africa following the Second Boer War okay, between the two countries. The stone was taken by the police escort to Sandram, Sandram House in Norfolk for presentation to the king on his birthday. And then the king gave it to the care of Scotland Yard, the famed headquarters of the Metropolitan Police, until it, had been, until it was decided exactly what to do with it. Then, in early 1908, it was decided to cut the rough and opaque diamond into brilliant gemstones. In order to get ideas on what exactly to do with the gems, a team of experts visited the British Crown Jewels in the Tower of London to see where they might be installed. So follow me on this, guys. So the precious stone was then sent to the diamond experts, Joseph Asher and company in Amsterdam for cutting. The process was to cut out and polish sparkling gems from the huge mass of rough stone. And that began in February 1908 and took the team of specialists eight months to complete, to cut it. <laughs> the original piece was then was first cut into two pieces, weighing 516 and 309 carats. The groove for the first cut alone took four days to prepare, and when Joseph Asher himself attempted to make the cut, the steel knife snapped. A second attempt was successful, and the original gemstone was eventually cut into seven large pieces. They were cut and they were polished to produce nine stones. When it was all cut successfully, Joseph Asher fainted. From nervous exhaustion it was such an important job that he fainted after doing it because he was successful he was so scared he was going to mess it up the largest stone of all is called the star of africa one or the colonel one and at 530 carats in comparison to the famous koi nor diamond from india that one weighs just um 105 carats not just weighs 105 carats but this one weighs 530 carats the star of africa is the largest cut fine quality colorless diamond in the world king edward the eight bought the colonel six and colonel eight from asher who kept the other large colonel stones the dutch diamond merchant also kept 96 smaller stones and unpolished frag fragments as his fee for cutting the original rough stone the south african government subsequently acquired all of these stones and presented them to queen mary in um in 1910 to comm commemorate the formation of the union of south africa that year and in 1911 both colonel three and colonel four were set into the coronation crown of queen mary all seven colonel diamonds are now part of the personal jewelry collection of queen elizabeth ii who was bequeathed them by queen mary in 1953 so star of africa one two and three 
are on display in the Tower of London, where Britain's other crown jewels, the Colonel One, is mounted in the Sovereign's Sphere, the Royal Scepter, while Colonel Two sits in the Imperial State Crown, as we know. And that's it.